Hey there, it's Samantha Mo, certified parent coach and owner of Mad to Glad Parent Coaching. If you want to stop bullying and give your child a voice, this is a very important parenting tip of the week. We all know that saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And that is just not true. We know with the research that's going on, as well as just experiential, if you ever grew up in a household or were in a relationship with emotional abuse and bullying, we know that words do hurt. So if your child is coming home reporting bullying or hurt feelings, it's really important to give them some tools to deal with bullying effectively. The first thing to do when a child comes home and they report bullying is you want to have a conversation that involves feelings. So not necessarily the back and forth, what did you do, what did he do, what did she do, did you tell somebody, not all the tangible back and forths because for us as adults it's really hard to hone in on what exactly happened and to be honest with you all of us perceive relationships and interactions differently so you may never get to the truth because everybody has their own reality. What's important and how you can cut through this murkiness is you can have a conversation just about how it made your child feel. So ask them, what were you feeling before this happened? What did it feel like when you reported what that child said to you or did to you? What did it feel like when that happened? And then afterwards, you can ask what they did and ask what that felt like also. Most of the time in bullying, the child who's being picked on doesn't feel empowered. So it's important to at first acknowledge their feelings to let them know that it's valid and that's going to bring about this sense of internal validation and begin the process of empowering them so that your child knows they deserve to feel how they feel. The next thing is to list out some potential responses. So ask your child, if you were responding at your bravest, how do you, what do you think you could have said? And you can come up with ideas like, leave me alone, don't do that, I'm going to tell somebody. And you can even act this out. So you can have your child assume a power pose. In yoga calm, we can do warrior pose where your hands are above your head and your legs are standing really strongly connected to the ground underneath you. And we don't have to call that a, a warrior pose. We can call that your strong pose. So for kids, they can get in that pose and they can say, well, if I was feeling brave, I would say, leave me alone. And this is a great thing for your child to practice in the safety of your own home. Now, they're not going to apply this power pose in public in front of this bully, but it's a way to lighten it up and provide, again, this underlying sense of empowerment, which is what we want to cultivate in children. And then we actually want your child to role play this response with you or even somebody else. Now what happens when a parent role plays with their child and the parent assumes the role of the bully, they're not actually that mean to kids. So if there's a sibling or a friend who can assume the um, role playing position of the bully, they tend to be able to be a little bit meaner, which is good in this scenario because it's still a safe environment and yet it will create a little bit of stress internally for your child. So then um, that actually replicates what it feels like in real life in a way, in a very safe way. So then they can actually practice saying, leave me alone. And you can be that strong voice in their ear or off to the side and you can say, now say it like with your really brave voice, say, leave me alone. This is a great practice to give your child a voice in combat bullying. Now then there's the other question of um, standing up for other kids who your child sees as being bullied, and it's the same process. Have the feelings conversation. List some potential responses that your child um, could respond with either to the bully or to the friend so that they can be a very upstanding type of friend. This is in the bullying literature, you can look it up. Rather than being a passive bystander, there's some, um, uh, there's this great label of calling, or teaching kids how to be upstanders, upstanding citizens, which, which immediately tells them that they're going to stand up for their friend or they're going to stand up for the bully. It's so important to consider what helps make your child brave? Is it words? Is it a worry or brave stone in the pocket? You might remember worry stones where you can just put in your pocket and rub between your fingers if you've ever heard of that concept. There can be little mementos like that that help kids feel brave. It's not enough to just have the conversation about bullying. 
it's also not enough to just reassure your child that they're good and lovable and important. What's key is giving them the tools, giving them the language to use, the role playing, and the body posture because we want the body to feel something different because sometimes when we're stressed out and we can't cognitively remember what we were going to say, our, our motor memory will kick in. We will remember this feeling of being powerful and strong. As you can imagine, this is beautiful to incorporate into your daily routines. You can do something in the morning where you have your child go into a brave pose, whether that's a yoga pose or something different that you guys play around with. Same thing can happen in the afternoon. Rather than saying something really or asking something generic like, how did your day go today? Every single day you can sit, ask something like, how were you brave today? Or what did you see today of somebody else being brave and using their strong voice? This is a way to keep your child's eye on success and strength and what we want them to move into. I really hope this video was helpful for you today, that it gave you some ideas that you can implement at home immediately because you see your child nearly every single day if you're like most parents. What you do matters. Empower them, give them a voice, show them what it means to be courageous, and stand in your brave as well. If you are an adult, these strategies benefit you also. I would love for you to leave a comment if you have an idea of something that works for you that you could share with another family just in the comments below so that we can all as a community work towards raising children and families and adults who are more brave and have a powerful voice so that we can eradicate bullying. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you next time.